Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the show. Um, we're standing up again for the Carlton recap, review, whatever you want to say. Beat GWS today by six goals. Um, this one, basically, um, was pretty much a bit of a slog. Um, and then we're able to, you know, extend the lead at the end, consolidate on that margin and basically uh, put the game to bed. Um, but we've got a few things to talk about today. Um, first and foremost, um, I want to give a huge shout out to Zachy Fisher and Adam Saad. Zach Fisher was exceptional today, um, had a lot of breakaway pace, was involved in link up, was getting back to help defensively, um, was hitting some good targets. He was grouse. Adam Saad um, won some crucial one-on-ones, took some good marks, ran down the guts and hit up some brilliant targets. There was one where he was running towards the boundary line and was able to swing it um, with that left foot of his to Harry Mackay perfectly kicked into the space so we could just you know harry just needed to run into the space and basically collect the ball um so that was grass and i think we kicked a goal from that um also setterfield um straight out of the resis played a game today probably his first full game in about four months i'd like to say but i'm not 100 percent sure um kicked an absolute perler from the boundary his first half was excellent i think he had a really good game he'd be really stiff to not hold his spot um he basically you know, did a lot of nice things, hit up some targets in the forward line, won 50-50s, kicked that perler of a goal, as I said, in the first quarter. Um, yeah, it was great. He did a, pretty much a bit of everything. So those are the three players that I think I'm really going to shine the light on today. Um, there's a few other things. Obviously, overuse again in the forward line. There were a ton of instances where we try to 10 to 12 handballs. I can probably recollect that memory. Um, it just didn't work and we were always running ourselves into trouble with that extra loopy hand pass or a hand pass that was a hospital hand pass. It's just not needed. Um, Jesse Motlop loves to do that. Um, there were sometimes moments where we'd handle to the back of the stoppage and you would have thought that we, you know, would have the composure to hit a target from there, but sometimes we'd feel rushed. That perceived pressure always gets to us. Um, Paddy Cripps as well. My, my guy. Bro, kick a drop punt. He had one in the last quarter. It was a beautiful kick, wonderful connection, straight through the middle. So why in the third quarter do you decide to snap around the body from a very similar position? Um, actually, no, probably wasn't. Had an angle, but why just not kick the drop punt? There wasn't really... It wasn't a tight angle in any way. So why would you do it? Um, yeah, and then he had another one where it just came off the side and was an absolute lamb shank. So... Um, he needs to tidy up a few things, but at the same time, um, when he kicks the ball, drop punt, takes the time to do it proper, it's, it's beautiful. So I don't know why he doesn't resort to it more often. Um, that's what I was really scared about. I thought that, you know, this game had a little bit of a St. Kilda vibe to it. You know, at the start of the game, we weren't really taking opportunities. Um, and you know, the scoreline really showed that. Giants had less shots on goal, but had kicked pretty, pretty truly most of the time. And we had... A number of opportunities and you know none of them came to fruition third quarter comes around and you know a lot of bad things happen in the third quarter Sam Walsh went down with an ankle injury and we thought that well our season was cooked uh, Jacob Weedering also went down I think he hyperextended his leg um, upon looking at the replay but I'm not 100% sure on that don't fact check me on that um, but that one was um, yeah pretty scary both of those guys going down two key pillars um, but they both came on and, you know, the roar as both those players came back on the ground was just exceptional and really chilling, should I say. Um, so yeah, and that was a moment where, you know, start of the quarter, that third quarter, we conceded a goal. We, you know, those two players went down and it looked a little bit dire. It was under a goal. Um, and then, you know, those two come back onto the ground. We kick a couple of goals. We have a little buffer going into three quarter time. Um, that Josh Honey goal in the goal square where he poached it. Don't ask me how that happened, but um, that's just, you know, the inexperience of the Irishman really, you know, getting to it. Um, I think another thing that we also want to mention, we, you know, we were talking about the overuse a couple of minutes ago, but um, at halftime, I looked at the stats and you could probably see every single Carlton ball winner had more handballs than kicks. Most notably, um, the most lopsided you know, kick handball ratio. Adam Chera 
had one kick and 14 handballs. Now, I can guarantee you we did not pick this guy up to have 14 handballs out of 15 touches in a half of football. Um, obviously, he's most, you know, damaging when he kicks the footy. And um, in the second half, you know, when we were, you know, able to create a little bit of scoreboard pressure, um, kick those goals, Chera had, I think in the end, 10 kicks and 16 handballs, 17 handballs. So he really evened it out much better in that second half, better ratio. Um, Walshie and Kripa also did the same thing. So um, that was good to see from them. And um, yeah, I think, you know, we had some really good performers today. Charlie kicked four goals. Um, Harry kicked a few as well. I'm not really sure how many. I don't really want to check that. I can't be bothered. But um, in saying that, um, it was a really strong win. And I think five goals probably does it justice because, you know, very iffy at the start of the game. Didn't play another full game. Um, once again, and obviously we've said in previous weeks, there are going to be teams that punish you and teams that don't. Um, and this was one of the weeks that we weren't, um, you know, we didn't find out the result, the bad result. Um, we didn't get, you know, we didn't pay the price, should I say. So yeah, good to see. Another little thing, um, at the start of the game, I mean, this is a game we should have won, you know, on paper, you book it. Um, but, you know, at the start of the game, and even looking at the first half, the matchups never looked, you know, quite right. We were way too tall in the back line and way too small in the forward line. And basically every single time we kicked it into our forward line, it was always going to be an out number. That extra man for GWS, I think in the ca in this case it was Haynes or Himmelberg or um, Brown. It was always one of those three trying to intercept. And it was always Durden, Motlop or someone else having to hold this player accountable, but not being able to because of their size and, um, you know, their strengths. So that's where we were sort of faltering in the first half. And at the other end, inversely, Weedering was on green. So that, you know, obviously isn't a great matchup you really want. And um, green was making us pay uh, quite a few times. So yeah, on paper, it never looked like the Giants was, you know, going to score more than 10 goals. We just had to find a way to kick more than 10 goals. And in the second half, you know, we were able to be a bit more free-flowing, be a bit more direct. Um, and we saw that quite a few times in our scoring chains. Do want to mention Matty Cottrell, great running back and forth, um, you know, two-way running. Obviously, that's what you ask for from your wingman. And he did that exceptionally in the third quarter. He had a couple times where he um, kicked goals, essentially running all the way from post to post and um yeah it was two goals from basically 10 meters out both times um on the other end he was i think he took a couple intercept marks or was on the last line and he was helping out there so really good stuff from him there as well just want to shout him out um yeah that's pretty much everything i think now the ladder dynamics really come into play though um we look at the current games and as i currently look at the stats um from both of the games that are currently happening, the Bombers lead um, by 14 points at the start of the last quarter, and St Kilda are only up one on West Coast. So St Kilda lose, and I think I can sit comfortably in my seat knowing we probably have secured finals. I haven't said it yet. I haven't jinxed it yet. Um, Collingwood, obviously, eight wins in a row. They are contending for a top four spot, as we are. Um, we're still in the hunt for that. So. They're not really concerning us as much. We need St Kilda to lose. Richmond have got some tough games and the Bulldogs. So um, at the moment, we're sitting quite comfortably. Two wins and a draw inside the eight. It's essentially three wins um, and we've got percentage on St Kilda. So you sort of rule them out if they don't have more points than us. And that's going to be very hard for them to do given how little time they have remaining. But at the moment... We're all talking about wins. Percentage is a bonus. Obviously, you know, you want percentage. You want big wins. Um, we're probably not going to get them at this time of season because, you know, we've got uh, Melbourne, Brisbane and um, another team, Collingwood, um, upcoming. So they're all really big games in terms of shaping the eights. And um, we've got Adelaide next week. So I think if there's going to be a game we need to win and win big, it's obviously next week. It's going to be a tough task. Um, we're going to be up for the fight. They were really good against the Swans, apart from the first quarter where they conceded nine goals. Um, so obviously that's showing a little bit of vulnerability going into next week. And that's obviously good for our prospects. Um, but yeah, we can't leave anything to be desired because they've got some really good midfield players. Sam Berry, Rory Laird, Keys, 
um, list goes on and Tex obviously in the forward line. So yeah, I think it's going to be a good game. Should be good. Um, obviously, we love the win. So make sure to enjoy that. Um, have a great rest of your day. We'll see how we go next week. Um, thanks for watching. Show your support. All of the above. Thank you. Have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.